Hey Naffers, it's your boy Hawker, back with another video, this time taking a look at Naff's recent return to form at the first tournament of the year. I'm sure you guys already know how much I love graphs, and I got another one for you here, this time showing rating and support round percentage. This is a stat on HLTV I haven't used too much previously, but from what I can gather, it takes into account rounds where you didn't get a kill, instead you just got an assist, survived, or were traded. So obviously in terms of rating, two players are just in a league of their own for this tournament. Simple and Zaiwu take the number one spots for rating, but because they're so good individually, they can't get that high of a rating on the support percentage side of things. But then, the third highest rated player of the tournament, by some distance, is Naf, who's also the third highest in support round percentage. The other players that do well in this stat are Zipex, Perfecto, and Flamey. But since this isn't a stat I've really used before, and it takes into account rounds where you just survived and didn't do anything else, I have a feeling it might tend to favour more passive players, so let's see if Naf truly is a support player while also being the third best player of the tournament, because it doesn't feel like that would make any sense now, would it? Something I immediately want to get out of the way is what people mean by support player and whether this stat actually shows it or not. I think the reason Naf does so well in this stat is probably because a lot of the positions he's playing are inherently ones where he's just not going to get as much action. For example, here on Ramp Room, you're either going to get a fair few players challenging you at Ramp, or maybe on your rotate down to B, or your A site players are likely to hold the site and not need your help. I think it's kind of similar on Inferno as well, where Naf plays as the B site anchor. Generally, the players who are playing on the periphery of the map are not going to get as many rounds where they're involved in the action. And that's kind of what this stat is oftentimes portraying. But that doesn't mean they're not in good or important spots in the team. For me, support player isn't really a term I use all that often. I normally like to refer to these sorts of players as role players where they're either shifting their role drastically to fit in for the better of the team, or they are brought in specifically to fill roles that other players on the team don't want to do. And I don't think it's fair to say that's what Naf is doing. I think he's more just playing passive spots that he kind of wants to play anyway. The rounds I've been showing on screen so far are just examples of rounds that would count technically towards his support round percentage stat, but are rounds that I don't really see as him being a support player, because normally he's just staying alive while his teammates get all the kills. But there were some rounds where I would say he was more of a supportive element. This round, for example, is one where Naf gets a weird kill early in the round with this Molotov on ramp, which to my knowledge means this wouldn't count to his support round stat. But then later on in the round, he has to go in first on this 2v2 retake towards B, and I don't think that's what Naf would want to do in this situation. Normally he seems to like being more towards the back of the pack, but he shows he's willing to actually go in first and let himself be traded for the better of the team in this spot. Then there's this round in round 28, where Naf is using some nades through door. He blows it up to begin with, has a smoke and flash at the ready. And even though the outcome of the round makes it look like a support round with him getting the flash assist through door, in reality, his teammates are going in first through hut and taking a lot of the attention. And so in many other circumstances in this exact round, Naf would actually be the one set up more to get the kills while the attention is drawn elsewhere. And again, this shows the kind of shades of grey you get when trying to define a support player, because oftentimes the star players are going to be passive players throwing nades for teammates and then trying to close the round if necessary, but sometimes they're not going to be needed when their teammates do well, and then they look like they're being more supportive than maybe they actually are. Let's move on to some of the star plays that Naf was making throughout this tournament. And I think his play at ramp was especially notable. Call cool Naf Obi-Wan Kenobi this tournament because he loved having the high ground here on ramp and playing up on top of this box. And there's a lot to like about this spot. It's not a position that's going to be pre-aimed, so you're very unlikely to get headshot, especially as players are going to have to flick quickly up to the head at a sort of diagonal angle, which isn't easy to do. 
It's also good for dodging nades. You can see in this round, the two flashes go soaring by Naf, and he doesn't have to worry about them in the slightest. And just in general, it's a very good spot to get multi-kills from. And even though I have my concerns as to how much you have to commit to playing this spot, it's not that easy to fall back from. I think in rounds where you go down 4v5 like this one, it is especially good to have the chance to get a multi-kill to bring your team back to a more even stead. We get another example of him using this spot successfully in round number 6. Once again, the initial angle onto the first player is almost always unexpected, but if Na'Vi have better spacing in this round, Perfecto actually does a fantastic job at baiting out a bunch of bullets, and if there was one more player ready to follow up, this could have been a kill and it could have been an AK lost. So you can see the pros and cons of this spot, but generally Naf was proving just how powerful this spot can be when you're on point. Here you get to see some of the potential drawbacks of Naf's committed style to playing ramp. In this round, Liquid get into a 5v3 advantage, but Naf doesn't have time to react to this, doesn't have time to reposition on this tight ramp angle, and as soon as he misses the first shot, there's no real contingency plan on how he's going to get away. Na'Vi do a good job at baiting out this second shot, and this was basically the only way they had into the round, and they end up going on to win this one. I can't really criticize Naf too much though, because he was generally finding a lot of success with this style of play. For example, in this round, he's playing an off angle at ramp, which nets him a free frag to kick things off. And he's able to get away, not necessarily to cover, but to a different spot where he gets a second kill. Again, I do wonder what would happen here if Na'Vi had a little more coordination and timing on this push. But at least when Naf plays aggressively like this, it's going to give his teammates time to plug the gap, rotate over, and make sure that ramp isn't entirely lost. After rotating down to B at the start of this round, Naf makes a massive heads up play to win his team this round. Initially, he's mainly just holding between decon and control room, waiting for sound cues. Then after doing some damage to Perfecto, he quickly pushes in through this door. This headshot is stunning onto Simple, and from here, he also catches Flamey in the back and just chews Na'Vi up from behind. Running it back, this initial reposition and re-aggression into double doors looks risky at first, but... Naf does have some information that there are a couple of players in control room breaking the glass and throwing nades. He also knows that Perfecto is in decon, so that's already three players probably accounted for. And most importantly, his teammates can't really help him from this decon angle. So he knows he has to change up his spot somehow, and there aren't really any good spots to play on this B site. Then going into the re-aggression itself, worst case scenario, you're causing an annoyance for Na'Vi in the back. Best case scenario, you get this kill onto an unsuspecting simple. And then you notice on the kill to Flamey, he doesn't even turn his back until it's too late. And this is another upside of making plays like this. When you're disrupting the opponents as they're going for a push, the comms can get very cluttered and you can easily get kills from behind that maybe in a perfect world you shouldn't, but in reality, no one is perfect with their communication and that's really what allows Naf to get away with this play. I also love some of the cheeky plays Naf had throughout this tournament. For example, in this round, a couple of players are down secret, but they decide they're going to end A. The bomb goes up the ladder, and then Naf decides to throw this bait out there, faking the sound going up the ladder, walking his way back down, and his prize catch in this round is Boomich, who falls for it hook, line, and sinker. This is just a lovely little micro play. I hope you guys enjoyed this video taking a little look at NAF. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll catch you next time.